I think we get somewhat of respect. Do I think we get the same as men? No. Fran Forenza is a full-time mom and full-time trainer. When she isn't doing either, she's being a referee. Can you believe that in 1997 is the year that women such as Violet Palmer and Dee Cantor became the first top-level female officials in any major U.S. professional sport? So it's understandable why the referee Fan Fariza feels the way she feels. I like it. I love it. I love it. Fran used to be a high school basketball player and now watches her kids play. Now her focus isn't just on the game. I was watching the refs and a lot of the calls I wasn't agreeing with and I know I played so I figured I better go to school, learn it so I could do a better job. So I had a basketball in my Teresa Dalton, another woman who has been inspired by the game of basketball since she was four, also decided to pursue refing as a hobby. I've, I've actually been very lucky in my career. Um, most of the men that I work with are very supportive, um, you know, and not only that, I've known most of them for about 10, 15 years, so it's actually nice. Basketball has been very good to me, so I wanted to find a way to get back into the sport, and I coached for a couple years, and uh, that was a little difficult with my job, so I looked into officiating. According to FemaleReferee'sWeebly.com, 14% of female athletes participate in basketball, while 58 participate in dancing and 53 participate in swimming. So this may be the reason why society feels a certain type of way about women in sports. Does this mean that there should be more female referees in sports, like dancing and swimming, or should female referees be able to branch off into other fields? I don't look at gender when I'm um, looking at referees. I look at their skill level and the quality of their communication with us as coaches. Um, I've dealt with some great referees as men and women and some what I believe poor referees, uh, women and men. So I don't look at them any differently. I look at the person and the quality as far as their ability to do a good job and then how they communicate with me on the sidelines. Mo most of the ones that I deal with female-wise are, are pretty good and they communicate with me pretty well. Um, they understand the game well, so um, it's been a good experience with, with, on my end. If it's a, men co a man coach, then definitely they get more respect because they probably think, because they think it's a man sport. I don't think they, to this day, even though things have gotten better, they still think basketball is a man sport, like football. Players like Mike Williams have played games with men and women referees giving him an idea on what fair play is when he's on the court. I personally don't have a problem with female referees. Um, I've been coached by female ref I'm not coached, but female referees have um, did some of my games before. And I, I feel as though if a man can ref women's basketball or sports, period, then why can't women ref men's sports? So I, Coach I Holm believes it's more of a challenge for women to actually prove that. Unfortunately, it's a common thing in this country where I think you know women in any fields probably you have to fight more so than men. NBA player Chris Paul from the LA Lakers was fined for his comment towards NBA referee Laura Hawkamp after he received a technical foul. He stated the call was terrible and that this might not be for her regardless of what Paul was implying. NBA has a low tolerance for sexist and disrespectful comments which was why he was fined $25,000. That he was obviously mad that he got a technical foul um, anyone who's played knows when in the heat of moment when things get, you know, aroused and, you know, you're angry and you get a, thrown a technical foul, you're upset. But I do think that her being the first female ref in such a big thing like the NBA, when, you know, games are close, you, the referees, they don't know what to do. They get scared. They don't know mm -hmm. what to do when games get close. That's a they different know, environment. Yeah, it's, a di it's completely different. When like you, compared to a little... After speaking to the ladies from the women's basketball team, I wanted a different outlook. He was speaking in general. For the simple fact, male officials make bad calls too. And if an official can't take the pressure, a player would tell a male the same way he'll tell a female, I don't think this is the job for you. I, I think he was approaching that from a male-female perspective. And I don't care if you're a male or female, if you have the ability, um, and if you're at that level, you know, that's more of like a tryout. You have to go through totally different levels of refereeing, camps, everything. You go from the high school to the college to the pro to get there. 
So obviously she was good enough to get there, so I thought that that was very disrespectful. I think it was unnecessary, you know, she took care of business and male or female, she did the right thing. It may not have anything to do with gender. He may just think she's not qualified for the job, so I don't know. But if that was his point, you know, because she's a woman, then no, he shouldn't have said it. It is a job for her and she does it well, or better than most men. Men coaches seem to want to pick on the women more because I don't think they think that women officials are as good as the men. But I, I disagree with that. It's up to, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man or what race or anything, if you do the job and you do it to your ability, that's what, all that matters. I wonder, with all the struggles that it takes to become a referee, how hard is it to be one? You have to take a course. Edgar Quattaro was the interpreter, so you take a course for three months, then you take a state test, and if you pass, you do high school. And then I had an invitation to go to Bob Pugh, which is a JUCO camp for college, and I went to the camp and I made it, and then I got other invitations for different levels. I had the opportunity to interview two Bloomfield College women basketball players named Imani Williams and Tiara Scott on their perspective on whom they prefer to referee their games. I would prefer a male referee. It's no judgment against female, but sometimes I feel like female referees, they don't, I'm not saying that they don't understand, but they, they're not, I don't know, it's not, I can't explain it. They're not as aggressive, you think? They, I think they're more aggressive. Female. I feel that female referees are actually better than male referees, and I feel that the more we have, the more we're better off. Because we're females, the more we're leaning. That's what I think. But um, I would personally prefer a male referee than a female. Right. I feel like males take it easier on females. They don't really treat them as if they were males because males are more aggressive. So I think male refs, they, they are too lenient. They don't let us play. Not saying that we're, you know, dirty and all that other stuff, but we want to play just as equally as males want to play. And that goes as female refs too. I think they call it fairly between both. Like, don't see me slap her hand and, you know, call it foul if you want us to play. You know? Right. Treat us like guys. That's how I honestly feel. Just treat us like guys. They're allowed to play as free as they want, but females, like, yeah. we're so strict and... Yeah. I talked to Bloomfield College basketball player Claude Blue. No preference at all. As long as they you know, do their job, do what they're supposed to do, there's no issue. Referees make bad calls. Sometimes they miss things. Male or female, it don't matter. So what do people think about the future of female referees? Me personally, no. But even our assistant coach, she's a female referee. Right. You know? so Maybe as a hobby. Maybe. Yeah. As a hobby. You know, when I'm at games, whether it be high school or college games, I'm trying to always encourage females to uh, enroll in the class so we can get more referees on the floor. Um, but it, it's, it is very time consuming and um, so I, I hope that I can um, encourage uh, young women to, uh, to take this route. Um, there's been some advancement with that. Um, but it's still a struggle and, and I hope it, it will increase and I just hope that people hire people based upon their skill and not their gender or color um, and there's some people that actually do that uh, but unfortunately there's people that don't do that so I'm just hoping we just keep advancing with the times and people just do the right thing and hire people based upon their performance and their skill and not their gender and their color. If you're talking about the pro level um I think that they have an opportunity. It's just that I think a lot of women, I don't think it's um, that they're not treated equally. I think a lot of women are afraid to go up that far. You don't, you don't see that many women doing men's college games. So I think the fact that you go from women to men is a totally different style of basketball. And I think a lot of women may be intimidated. One woman who defies the odds in regards to sport is Sarah Thomas, who is the first woman to officiate a major college football game, the first to officiate a bowl game, and the first to officiate in a Big Ten stadium at the age of 42. You never dream that this would really come true. Um, and if you're fortunate enough to be a trailblazer and whatever that is, don't let your gender or, or race or whatever it may be keep you from doing something that you love.